गुड मॉर्निंग ऑल ऑफ यू टुडे द टॉपिक ऑफ द क्लास इज फेरेंजल क्लेफ्ट एंड पाउचेस फेरेंजल क्लेफ्ट दीज आर द डिपिंग ऑफ द एक्टोडामल लाइनिंग इन बिटवीन द टू एडजेंट आर्चेज और वी कैन से दिस इज इनवेजिनेशन ऑफ द एक्टोडाम इन बिटवीन द टू आर्चेज हेयर यू कैन सी द फेरेंजल क्लेफ्ट दिस वन दिस हेयर and here these are the pharyngeal clefts so 1 2 3 and 4 pharyngeal clefts are there now what is endodermal pouch you can see this yellow one is the endodermal lining of the pharyngeal arch and it is evaginating outward here 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 and here this these are the endodermal pouches so evagination of the endodermal lining of the pharyngeal uh, arch forms the endodermal pouch or the pharyngeal pouch so dipping of the ectoderm is pharyngeal cleft or the branchial cleft and evagination of the endodermal lining is called as pharyngeal pouch here you can say there are four pharyngeal clefts and four pharyngeal pouches initially there are uh, five pharyngeal pouches but but uh, the fifth pouch is rudimentary so it will disappear soon now coming to the pharyngeal clefts or the pharyngeal groove first the first uh, pharyngeal cleft forms the external auditory meatus and also forms the outer layer of the tympanic membrane so this is the first pharyngeal cleft this one and it will form external outer part will form the this part will form the external auditory meatus and uh, inner part this part will form the tympanic membrane and uh, second third and fourth pharyngeal cleft will disappear why they will disappear because of overgrowth of the second pharyngeal arch this is the mesoderm of the second pharyngeal arch which overgrows over the second third and fourth clefts so that will obliterate these clefts and there will be formation of a cavity this cavity is called as cervical sinus so uh, this is how the cervical sinus is formed and the uh, cavity uh, and the the clefts are disappears so this one is the cervical sinus and this is overgrowth of the second pharyngeal arch which lead to obliteration of the cervical uh, which lead to obliteration of the pharyngeal clefts now here in this diagram you can see the first pharyngeal cleft is which will form the external auditory meatus and uh, this is this will form the external auditory meatus and tympanic membrane this is uh, this uh, here you can see the cervical sinus this one is the cervical sinus which will disappear and uh, if this cervical sinus persists then it will lead to formation of branchial cyst and these branchial cysts are present along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid this is anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and you can see along the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid branchial cyst are seen and it is formed due to persistence of the cervical sinus and if the cyst ruptures that will lead to formation of branchial sinus and uh, what is branchial fistula or the cervical fistula if the sinus it is communicating here in the second diagram you can see this is the pharyngeal cavity and this is the skin over the sternocleidomastoid muscle this one the skin so if communication is uh, present in between the pharyngeal cavity and this outer part uh, outer skin then this track or this uh, is called as fistula so it is if the sinus is formed by the rupture of branchial cyst and if the uh, the sinus uh, become communicating then it is called as fistula branchial fistula or the cervical fistula in this diagram you can see the <coughs> this is the anterior border of the sternocleidomastoid and uh, along the anterior border you can see the cervical cysts and fistulas also 
and in the both diagrams you can see the cervical cyst this swelling and this one both are the branchial cyst or the cervical cyst and this one uh, the diagram uh, first diagram is showing the external fistula which is opening on the x skin and this is the internal fistula which is opening in the pharynx near the tonsillar sinus this purple one is the tonsillar palatine tonsil so internal fistula opens near the tonsillar sinus into the cavity of pharynx so branchial sinus sinus are of two type external and internal and uh, external sinus will open into onto the skin and internal sinus open into the pharynx near the palatine tonsil and this one is the fistula which is communicating which is communicating the cavity of the pharynx and skin over the sternocleidomastoid now coming to the pharyngeal membrane what is pharyngeal membrane it is located in between the two adjacent arches where the clefts and pouches oppose to each other so here you can see the black lining this one is the pharyngeal membrane and this area it is forming the pharyngeal membrane it contains ectodermal lining which is shown by the red uh, pen and uh, bluish one is the ectodermal lining reddish one is the endodermal lining and minimal area of the green color that is mesoderm of the arch so it is this pharyngeal membrane is made up of three layers ectoderm mesoderm and endoderm and uh, this pharyngeal membrane the pharyngeal membrane will form tympanic membrane and the second third and fourth pharyngeal membrane will disappear here you can see the pharyngeal membrane this one is the pharyngeal membrane so we have seen that clefts and membrane first cleft will ext, uh, ect, uh, ectodermal cleft will form the external auditory meatus and outer layer of the tympanic membrane and first pharyngeal membrane will form the tympanic membrane and uh, second third fourth cleft and membrane both will disappear now coming to the pharyngeal pouches we have seen that uh, uh, pouches are the uh, evagination of the endodermal lining in between the two arches and these pouches which are endodermal they uh, form important structures like uh, tympanic cavity or the middle ear cavity tonsil parathyroid thymus these are formed by these pouches endodermal lining of these pouches will form it and here middle ear cavity and is taken tube and there are fifth uh, five pharyngeal pouches and fifth one is rudimentary so finally there are four pharyngeal pouches are there here you can see the endodermal pouches these are the endodermal pouches and uh, this one is the ectodermal cleft and here the branchial sinus is forming now first pharyngeal uh, pouch first pa pouch or the first endodermal pouch uh, this is uh, forming a it is shown by the yellow color and it is forming a diverticulum this one and uh, this diverticulum this diverticulum and uh, this diverticulum has a proximal part is narrow and distal part is dilated this part so proximal narrow part will form the this narrow part will form the auditory tube which is opening into the pharynx this is the cavity of pharynx so proximal nar uh, narrow part is forming the auditory tube and uh, distal dilated part will form the tympanic cavity or the middle ear cavity 
and its base this part will form the this part will form the tympanic membrane or the ear drum so first pharyngeal pa uh, pouch will form the three structures first is the tympanic cavity or the middle ear cavity which is formed by distal dilated part and uh, proximal narrow part will form the the proximal narrow part will form eustachian tube this narrow part and the distal dilated part will form the middle ear cavity or the tympanic membrane this dilated part and its base or the distal most part will form the tympanic membrane now the second pouch it give rise to important structure that is palatine tonsil so during third month what happens the lining of this uh, pouch will proliferate and it will form tonsillar bud and this tonsillar bud grows into the underlying mesoderm this is underlying mesoderm and this purple one structure which has been shown as the endodermal 